Are you struggling with menopausal weight gain or having difficulty with menopausal symptoms? Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you my top strategies for handling this. Hey everyone, this is Stephanie from Fast Track to Health Wellness Center. Please subscribe so I can keep you up to date on the latest in natural health, wellness, and weight loss. So in part one, please check it out if you haven't already, we talked about the first two tips for handling menopausal symptoms and weight loss. The first one being balancing blood sugar through diet, basically low carb, keto, and then reducing inflammation by also including healthier fats into your diet and less inflammatory foods and in addition to that, trying intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. So as a 49 year old lady, I understand what you're going through and I'm trying as hard as I can to make sure that I enter menopause in a very relatively easy way and not gain extra weight. So I can speak from experience with all of this. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the three organs that we really need to pay attention to when dealing with menopause. Number one is the liver. So as you know, the liver has so many different functions throughout the body, and it's very important that we keep it unclogged and uncongested. So that means we have to keep our diet really clean and detoxify on a regular basis. Now, what does that mean? Basically, the body is detoxifying on its own all the time, but we can enhance its detoxification by not adding to that load and not overburdening the liver. So we can do a yearly detox. If you want to know the one that we use, just write in the comments below, standard process, and we'll tell you all about the one that we use. Also, natural products. You need to use natural products on your body, on your skin. So instead of using just regular products, you want to make sure whatever you're using is not full of chemicals because that's just going to put an extra burden on your liver. And it's also going to interfere with the estrogen imbalances because the liver has a lot to do with clearing out bad estrogens. So if you're going to keep using products that give you xenoestrogens or bad estrogens, it's only going to make the situation worse. So you want to make sure that whatever you're putting on your hair, your skin, your armpits, anywhere on your body, you want to use a natural version instead of something that is very toxic. Okay. So that's the first thing you want to keep in mind. Now, as far as foods go, you want to eat foods that are really good for your liver and that will enhance your detoxification as well. So lots of greens and the number one food for the liver is beets and then sour foods are great as well. In one of my recent gallbladder videos, I talked about some of the best foods for the liver and gallbladder. So you may want to check that out too. And one other thing I want to mention regarding the liver to keep it from being overburdened, like I just mentioned, you want to pay attention to the amount of alcohol that you're drinking. I know that everybody loves to drink alcohol in general and also to help them relax at nighttime. But if you're trying to lose weight, it's just empty calories that you don't need that are going to slow your weight loss down and they're going to put a really big burden on the liver. So try not to use alcohol as the way that you relax every night and try to find other ways to do that. Moving on to the next organ, we want to talk about the gut. Okay. So the gut has different areas. We have the stomach, we have the small intestine, we have the large intestine. As far as the large intestine goes, you want to make sure that your flora is balanced. So if if you have a history of using a lot of antibiotics, there's a good chance that you have an imbalance of flora. So you want to focus on getting more good bacteria into your body through probiotic rich foods that contain prebiotics and probiotics. So fermented foods are excellent for that. Or if you're not eating enough of those, you can take a probiotic supplement, but keep in mind, probiotic supplements are not the same as eating the foods. Eating the foods are a much better way to get that done. Also, you want to make sure that your protein digestion is optimized within your your stomach. I have some recent videos on that that you can check out and you want to make sure your fat digestion is optimized too within your liver and gallbladder. And you can check out those recent videos too. So the gut, keeping that nice and healthy, that also helps with clearing out the estrogens and keeping everything balanced there. Okay. Last, but certainly not least are the adrenal glands. So I recently did a whole series on the adrenals but they are super important going into menopause because when the ovaries shut down, the adrenals kind of take over when it comes to the sex hormones. So if they're not doing so well, you're definitely going to have problems. So adrenals basically come down to really modifying your lifestyle. So working on your stress levels, managing your stress, however you can, making sure you're getting quality sleep, Exercise wise, you want to make sure you're doing moderate exercise and not overdoing it. You don't want to put any extra burden on the stress hormones. 
So those are three lifestyle things you can do. You wanna make sure you're getting enough vitamins and minerals into your diet through a nice whole food organic diet, okay? And if you are taking supplements, you don't wanna take synthetic supplements, you wanna take whole food supplements to get your, your B complex and your C, okay? Anything else synthetic is not doing you any good in the long run. And then lastly, there are plenty of adaptogenic herbs that you can use for the adrenal glands, and I highly recommend that you do this because they're just gonna help you in so many different ways. And there's a lot of different ones that you can use. If you wanna get some insight on the ones that we use, you can either check out the videos I've done before, or you can write in the comments below adrenals, and I'll send you a link to some of the products that we use to help balance the adrenals. But let me just give you a quick list of some of the herbs that we use in our clinic. One of them being ashwagandha. Another one is really great is licorice and then rhodiola. These are some three of the ones that we use very frequently in our clinic with great results. Like I said, I have some other videos on the adrenal, so check those out. Uh, so I hope these tips were helpful. Menopause, you, you don't have to suffer. I know this is a lot of information and it's a lot of things to tackle. Just do the best that you can. Pick one or two, try those out first and see how it goes. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. And if you wanna work with us one-on-one, -on -one, that's what we do best. So please get in touch and we will set you up for a free consultation. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care.